So note taking in D&D is pretty important. D&D can have lots of characters and complicated storylines that may take months or even years to play out, and keeping detailed notes can help you stay on track and remember things that happened a long time ago. It's a great way to stay organized, and I personally prefer digital notes. I like that they're searchable and you can add links and images and more easily share them with the rest of your party. I know a lot of people prefer paper notes and that's great, but if you want notes that look something like what you see in front of you, I'm going to be walking you through that today. So let's do a quick overview of these sort of notes. You can see there's a table of contents here. And this has all of the links to various portions of the notes. This is uh, some notes that I take for a campaign that I'm involved in. So if you wanted, for instance, to look at the campaign map, you can just click on the table of contents link for the campaign map and it brings you right there. If you want to see when what happened on a certain session, maybe session eight, you could click on that. And here are all of the notes that I took for that session. And I like to bold character names and italicize any spells or special abilities. And I also, you'll notice, tend to link things that people may not be familiar with. So often that's spells or certain creatures. So if we go ahead then and click on Summon Monster 2, maybe I forgot what it did, we'll be brought to the SRD page for Summon Monster 2 and you can read what it does. This is helpful if there are party members who play different classes and maybe they're unfamiliar with the spells or abilities of the other party member's class and you can help refresh them when they look through the notes and in case they forgot what a certain spell does. So you can also do other things like create a table. Here is a party inventory table with a column for the item, the quantity, and the description. One of the nice things about this in a digital form is it can kind of be as long or as short as you want. It will just expand to fit the space needed. And the last thing that's really cool is searching notes. So if I wanted, for instance, to search for my character's name, his name is Laurel. So if I search for that, we will get all of the instances of that character name throughout the notes. So that's pretty cool if you needed to find uh, an NPC who you remember you were introduced to at some point, but you're not exactly sure when, you can just control F and search just like you would in any other web page. So the program that I use to create these notes is called Emacs, and you can see it on the left here. This is a free program. It's available on Linux, Mac, and Windows. I'll leave a link in the description to download it. Feel free to download it, install it, and work alongside me in creating these notes. I'll also leave a link to this. It can act as a sort of template when you're creating notes. So we're going to start with something like this. If we were to just render out this page, there's no notes added yet. It will look like this. And for the purposes of this video, I've zoomed it in. It doesn't actually look that big. In reality, it looks much, much smaller and neater. But I just zoomed it in so we can see what's happening. OK, so if we wanted to start taking notes, one of the first things we might want to change is the title of the notes. So you can do that up here with this hashtag plus all caps title. Just change this to whatever you want your notes to be. I'll just say tutorial notes. And this second line here, this defines the theme. So if I turn on rainbow mode, which is a command in Emacs, I can see the colors are highlighted uh, with the actual color tone that they represent. And here, this color is responsible for the links. So all the links in the page will be associated with this color. You can see it's a red. This is the background color. It's like a charcoal dark gray. And this is the white of the text. So feel free to tweak these to however you like it. Also, this little styling uh, makes the, the notes centered in the page, and it gives them a maximum width of 1,000 pixels so they don't kind of expand to fill the page. So if we wanted to start taking notes, one of the most important things to uh, understand about 
uh, org mode is the use of headings. So headings are the things which will show up in the table of contents. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to generate that. It will automatically generate it once you uh, export these notes. But everything that uh, begins with an asterisk and a space, this is a heading. So if I put something, say, like session notes, this would show up in the table of contents. So we'll add a couple different headings. And the way you add another heading of the same type is with Alt and Enter. So if I wanted one for biographies and maybe one for an appendix, I could do that like so. Now, you also might want to add subheadings. And if we press Enter and we do just one asterisk again, this will be a regular heading, which is not what we want. We want a subheading. So the way you do that is with a, sec a second asterisk. So if we put a second asterisk and now a space, we can see the color has changed to purple to indicate this is a different type of heading. And we can call this session one. And if I wanted to add a couple sessions, I could do that with Alt Enter and then just the session title. Now, currently, I have an option in this file where we set the depth of the table of contents to be two. That means that the headings, all the headings which are indicated in blue, and all the subheadings indicated in purple, those will appear in the table of contents. But for instance, if I created a sub subheading with three asterisks, or sorry, asterisks, let's say we had combat in this session, this combat here would not show up in the table of contents. It will show up in the notes, but not in the table of contents. If you wanted this to show up in the table of contents, you could change this to three, but I'll just leave it at two for now. So even within combat, we can have more subheadings. So we'll do four asterisks and we can do a round one, round two, and round three, just as an example. And then within each of these, here's where we're gonna put our actual notes. So we can do a hyphen and this will show up as like a bullet in the notes. And we can do something like, let's say we had a player name and we wanted to bold that. The way we do that is put it in between two asterisks. And let's say we had a player character, Fiona. Again, this will show up as bold. And we want her to cast Fireball. Now, like I said earlier, I like to italicize the names of spells and special abilities. And the way you do that is to enclose it within two slashes. So let's say she casts Fireball. All right. Now, one other thing we could do, like I showed before, is we could link to the actual SRD. So to do that, let's go over to Google. And I'm just going to search for Fireball D&D 3.5. And you can see here we have a link to Fireball. This is the SRD. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that link and go ahead and select Fireball. And now to insert a link, we're going to use Control C, Control L in Emacs. That will open up this little prompt here, and it's asking for a link. We can go ahead and paste in our link with Control Y. See, it shows up right there, and we'll hit Enter. Now it asks for the, the description of the link. That's what will show up, uh, the, what the link will be associated with in the text. And since we already selected the text that we want the link to be a part of, it automatically populates it down here, so that's fine. We'll just press Enter to accept. And now we can see it's highlighted in blue and underlined, and when we click on this, we are brought to the page for Fireball. Pretty cool. Maybe it's not always necessary. That'll be up to you. Okay, so now what if we wanted to do something where we add, let's say, a campaign map? So I'll go over to Session Notes and I'll add a campaign map heading. And in order to add it, you add images in org mode with two enclosed brackets, like so. Now, to tell org mode where the image is, we're going to use a dot and a forward slash. That tells it that we are searching for an image in the same folder that the notes file is in. So I have a 
a file in that folder called test.jpg. And now if I uh, rendered this to this screen, we would see this image pop up. But if I wanted to check what the image looks like even just in org mode before I export it to my notes, I can do that with Control-C, Control-X, Control-V. And that shows the inlined images, and now we can see this campaign map pops up. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and export this now just to show how that process works. Typically, I only export once every session at the very end once I've done all my notes, and then I upload that HTML file to a web server so that people can access it at the same link all the time, and it always has the most updated uh, notes. So to export it, we're going to press Alt-X, and then we're going to type the command org HTML export as HTML, and you could tab to automatically complete that at any point. And now we're going to save this file. This is the HTML that will wind up being on this page. So we can save that with Control X, Control S. And now it's asking where do we want to save it. I'm going to save it to example notes.html. It asks if we want to overwrite the file. We're going to say yes. It's asking if we want to do it even though this file is also open somewhere else. I'm going to also say yes. And now if we head over here and refresh the page, we see we now have a table of contents with, as I said, only the first two, the heading and a subheading. And we have the campaign map. I'm going to zoom out here so we can see it a little easier. We have the campaign map and we have fireball. And if we click on this, it brings us to the link just like we want. All right. So the last thing we're going to do or one of the last things we're going to do is tables. So let's say in the appendix I wanted to add a party inventory. So let's give that a subheading. And to add this inventory, we're going to create a table. And the way we create a table in org mode is with vertical lines. So I'm going to create a four column table. So I need five vertical lines. And the first column is going to be the item name, second will be quantity, and you can see as I tab it automatically formats it and takes me to the next cell. We're going to have a description and we're going to have a weight. Now if I press tab again when there are no more new cells to hop to it will just create a new row for us. So I'll have an item called or a dagger We'll have one of it, and we'll say that it's for the rogue. And maybe this weighs half a pound. Let's add another one. We'll do books, two books for the wizard, and two pounds. So you get the idea. And now if we export this with, again, org export HTML, or sorry, org HTML export as HTML. Save that to our example. Yes, twice to save it and we refresh. We can see our table down here. Now, if you notice, this table doesn't have anything like a horizontal divider. It doesn't have vertical dividers for the columns. So let's go ahead and add that now. So in order to add a horizontal divider to indicate the difference between the header row and the next rows in the, col in the columns, we'll do a vertical line followed by a hyphen and then just tab. And see it automatically puts this whole row in. And now when we export it, that will show up as a vertical line. All right, we're not quite done. We wanted also column lines. So these lines, we want to actually have them show up in the column. And the way we do that is with a vertical line and a forward slash. See how it highlights it in this teal color. Now we do open, close, left, right brackets for each of the columns that we want to have left and right vertical lines adjoined to. So we want it on all of our columns. So we'll just do it like that. So I'll go ahead and save this and then export it as HTML. We'll go ahead and save it as our example notes.html. 
override it and agree to write it even though we have it open. And if we refresh it, we now see we have this line differentiating the header of the table from the rest of the contents, and we have these nice vertical lines which show the columns. All right. Now, the last thing I want to show is you can do things like add ordered notes. So if we wanted, for instance, if things happen in a certain order, we can do that with a start with a one and then a close parentheses, and we'll just call this event one. And now we'll hit Alt Enter, and you can see it returns to the next line and adds a two with a closed parentheses automatically. And we'll just call this event two, Alt Enter, event three. And this is a nice way if you need to do uh, events that happen in a certain in an order, or if you want to uh, change things uh, later, you can move them up and down with the Alt up and down arrows. So if if you wrote th wrote things down in one order but want to change it later, you can press Alt and Enter to move it around. Same thing goes for tables. You can say Alt and Enter, and that will move. Uh, your uh, rows up and down. You can do alt, also alt left and right if you wanted to move the columns back and forth. So org mode is really cool. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it. So hopefully you get some use out of it. I think it's a really fun program and it really doesn't take long to create really nice and efficient notes uh, once you just get the hang of how, how the program works. All right, thank you for watching.